Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Congratulations. You've made it to the end of the semester here at HCC. Thanks for being here with us. Our final show, 2021 for Up to the Minute. What a year it's been, huh? We're looking at good things in 2022, and we've got a great show lined up for you. Some special guests coming up, but right now, Dr. Tony Reyes Sutherland. Tony, you're wearing your red. You're looking festive. I imagine you're ready for a holiday break. I'm definitely ready for a holiday break. Uh, I figured this is our last day. I've got to be Christmassy, so I picked red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good choice there. That's right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be taking a holiday break here at HCC. For those of you who are faculty and staff, uh, we'll be off starting on Monday, and we won't return till the 3rd of January. So a lot of great things coming up. First things first, uh, we're now on HCC TV. When HCC is in session, we always produce the show live on Facebook and YouTube. But if you don't catch us live at 10 a.m., you can watch the rebroadcast on HCC TV. We're on at noon, 5 p.m., and now 10 p.m. But you can always follow us in social media, Tony. You can find us by going to Houston Community College District, not just HCC, because there's a lot out there, but Houston Community College District. And you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere practically on social media. You can follow us and uh, it'll be good. <laughs> That's right. Make sure you find us in social media. Okay, Tony, stick around because you'll be interviewing this next guest. We've got Kay Jukes. She is the program director, dental assisting with HCC's Coleman College of Health Sciences. Kay, good to see you. Let's see if she's there. Well, don't worry about it. We'll get you. We'll check in with you shortly. So stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Hear all about things going on at Coleman. We'll get you to unmute your mic when we get to you. Uh, first things first, it's Film Friday. And, you know, earlier this year, uh, 2021, um, we lost one of our icons in the Houston area, the River Oaks Theater shuttered its doors. And uh, I think I went to one of the last shows the weekend before that. But there's a group in town that's looking to get them back up and running. And we've got Sarah Gish. She's the co-founder of uh, Friends of River Oaks. She's an artist creator for Ignite Your Life. And she's our Film Friday guest. Sarah, good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. I, thank you so much for having me on um, on your last show to, to fit this in because it's a really important cause. Yeah, we've been looking forward to hearing about this. I, it seems to me I read something a few months back that you guys were active and you're looking at maybe reopening the River Oaks in a, in a reimagined River Oaks theater. Tell us what's going on there. Well, the, a lot is going on. Um, first of all, an important uh, point to make is that Weingarten Realty um, who quite honestly does not um, love history, shall we say. And yeah. um, they were bought out by Kimco Realty, which is a new company. So the River Oaks Theater has a new landlord. Um, so that was a piece of good news for us. And um, we uh, have tried several configurations to get the theater um, into private hands, and that didn't work out. So we are very, we are very hopeful that Kimco will find a movie theater operator and that there will be a movie theater. Um, it'll be up and running hopefully soon. I mean, I worry, yeah. I used to run the River Oaks Theater and, you know, several landmark theaters in the 90s. Right. And I know what happens when theaters sit still and dormant for a while. Um, so it's really not good for the, the physical structure of the building. Um, but so we're, we're hoping, we're hopeful that the theater will reopen um, with a new operator and that, but that's when we founded, co-founded, I have four other founders. Um, we make creative friends, friends of River Oaks Theater um, because we want to be a partner with whoever opens up the theater. Yeah, We've already raised funds. So it's really exciting. We had a big fundraiser with a bunch of Rocky Horror Picture Show people. They always save the day. They came and protested with us and um they organized this fundraiser and we raised $10,000. So it's sitting in our That's great. offers. Yeah. With Southwest alternate media project, which is our fiscal yeah. sponsor and nonprofit. So, let me, um, let me ask you this. I, I know that um, 
does does the new realtor or the new landlord uh, seemed uh, that they want to one way or another keep this as a movie theater? Because what I've found is tragic is over the years, you know, we had the Tower Theater, the Alabama Theater. Now they're, you know, restaurants and uh, a grocery store. But do they seem committed that the River Oaks Theater is going to stay a theater? Well, you know, and of course, real estate transactions, commercial ones are very private. So we just don't know. I mean, it's kind of a wait and see game. Um, We are doing events, which I can talk about in a minute. But but our goal right now is just to keep the theater top of mind. Right. To show um, everyone, the community, the media um, and the landlords that we are the River Oaks Theater is not going away. It's in the community's hearts and minds. And so we're very hopeful. We actually have been doing surveys of people and you can go to our website, which you can't see very well with my shirt, but friend, uh, save river oaks theater.org. Right. Um, and we've got a survey there asking people what they want and they have shown, and we actually made a little video of our survey. So people want the theater back with, you know, better amenity, right. better amenity. How do you say that? Amenities. There, there you go. go. Amenities. Tough word. Some college student needed to help me out with that word. Um, But, you know, some beautiful amenities and also a preserved theater. You know, we want to have it a little bit um, fixed up before it opens up again. Yeah, I mean, because this theater, um, I'm reading in my notes, uh, was around since 1939. Is that correct? Yes. And it opened with the movie Bachelor Mother. And um, I I should read David Niven. There we go. David Niven was in in the movie. Um, And then it closed with The Father um, with Anthony Hopkins. So it's kind of a ironic yeah. um, opening and closing, but I, but I want to say it's temporarily closed, you know, it's just right, right. on vacation. So um, yeah, yeah. It's been around a long time. It actually was around when there was nothing else on the block. Um, there's a, there's a photo um, where it just is a standalone building. So it's, yeah. it really has galvanized. It's a lightning rod for the city because people everywhere I go, people love this theater. And I know you do Todd. I've seen I do. I've been yeah. interviewed by you there. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's an incredible theater. I did see the father uh, there when it. And I also saw the other movies they had planned at the same time. We made yeah. it always. Uh, we could go a couple times a weekend to so really Aww. do miss it. Um, events coming up. If people want to help, do you have some of them coming up that we could uh, highlight for you? Well, one thing is I want to say this is an event. Is buying a T-shirt for Christmas gifts, and yeah. they are um, going to be coming at the end of December because I ordered some. Um, but so it's a great Christmas gift. I've got stickers, dun, 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 which we are giving away at places like Cactus, Kaboom Books, and Epicure. Um, so we just did a really fun event, which we weren't sure we were going to get away with, um, called Bring Her Back. And we had asked people what their favorite films were that they saw at the theater. And we made a trailer reel of about 80 of those films. And we screened them on the back of the River Oaks Theater, literally. Oh, wow. Um, from <laughs> Mr. McKinney's Houston History Buzz. It was super fun. And the That's plan cool. was if we got in trouble, we would drive off in the bus with our projection equipment. Um, <laughs> but it was a very wonderful event. We actually had a hired security guard and popcorn to give away. Marfrelis opened their bar. Um, so we want to do an event like that again. We want to do several of them. Right. Um, and the birth of film is in March. So that was the event that we just did was for the River Oaks Theater birthday um, party, 83rd birthday. Um, and, you know, who knows? I, I'm hoping that maybe we can get together the Rocky Horror Picture Show cast and do a screening of that film. Oh, that would be great. Um, yeah. The sky's the limit. Yeah. Well, we're always supportive of everything you guys are doing. We'd like to maybe get an update next year. Hopefully you'll yeah. have some good news in the near future. And we'll have the uh, uh, your website link in the social media post for this show. Sarah Gish, thanks for being here. Friends of River Oaks Theater. Uh, we're looking forward to getting back in that theater sometime soon. Yes, I hope so too. Thank you. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays to you, Sarah. Bye-bye. All right. We're going to turn things over to Dr. Tony. And Dr. Tony, you've got a very special guest from Coleman College of Health Sciences. Yes, I do. Her name is Kay Jukes. She's the program director of dental assisting for HCC Coleman College. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Tony. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, dental assistance. I go to the dentist, and when I go to the dentist, 
I, I don't really see the dentist that much. I mean, I may be there an hour or two hours, but I might see the dentist for maybe 10 minutes. The rest of the time, I'm with the dental assistants, <laughs> it seems like. So uh, tell me a little bit about what dental assistants do. Wow. Dental assistants, the job encompasses so much. You know, we're generally the first person that greets the patient when they come in the door. Uh, you know, we seat them, we take the x-rays generally, we mix any cements for the doctor, any impression materials, we take all their x-rays. Uh, we're kind of like the dentist right-hand person. We're there to help uh, with anything they need. And, you know, we're kind of there, the patient, you know, confronts in us everything that's going wrong or going right. And so we relay that to the doctor. Then, you know, our main job is to make the patient feel comfortable in the chair. Well, you know, uh, HCC is well known for having an outstanding dental assistant program. Uh, why is that so? Well, Houston Community College is the only program in the greater Houston area that has a Commission on Dental Accreditation accredited program. Um, so what that means, that's the same accrediting body that oversees dental hygiene programs, dental programs. So that's why we're a little bit different than some of the proprietary schools. The program is one year in length. You know, our students are in high demand for jobs. I wish we could keep up with the jobs out there, um, which is great for our program, of course. And uh, how hard is it to get into the program at the application process, the acceptance process, that type of thing? Um, I wouldn't say it's majorly difficult. We have this past year had an increase in abundance of applications. Normally where we would get about 40 applications, we've been getting close to 80. So it has been a banner year for us for the fall. Um, we usually only take 24 in the fall and we actually accepted 32 and proud to say all 32 have made it to the second semester. So that's even better. And we are actually starting a spring cohort now. We're going to take 12 students in January due to the high demand. So uh, we are booming right now. So if we go to become a dental assistant, what are some courses that uh, are involved in it? I, I think you said it was a year and a year and uh, just, a year. Take, just a year. Okay. Yes, so uh, what are some of the courses that somebody takes when they, want to become a dental assistant? So we have two different routes. You can become, uh, we can, you do the certificate route, which is just the 12 months, or you can actually do an associate. So most students, we have a lot who come right out of high school and they do the certificate program. So it's mainly all dental courses, except for our prerequisite of the introduction to health professions. But they take courses in dental materials, chair side assisting, our sciences, which is all of our anatomy, um, they also do preventive learning about um, fluorides and, you know, different things patients can use to help prevent cavities. Um, and we do an office management course as well. So we cover every aspect of dentistry there is. I know that when I go to the dentist, the, it's the dental assistant who tells me all the things that I need to do to have a healthy mouth. <laughs> They're always saying, now you need to do this and you need to do this. And, you know, yeah, so I, I can see where they do take a lot of uh, courses in that area. Um, now, uh, as a part of the program, are students required to complete external hours? Yes, we do. In the second semester, they go out and they work in general dental offices. So we try to get our students, we find the offices. It's not their job to find their offices where they go to. We use the University of Texas Dental Branch. We use the city clinics. We use private practices. So that way the students get all aspects of the dental field and the types of offices available. In the summer, they choose specialties. So if they would like to go out and see an oral surgery office, we will try to send them to an oral surgery office where they may even get the benefit of going to the hospital and doing cases with the dentist. Uh, if they would like to go into pediatrics and work with children, we'll send them to a pediatric office. Um, we have so many different types and so many avenues, but we want them to get a feel for what the whether they want to stay in general dentistry or whether they would like to do a specialty. Let them see what it's actually, actually like prior to getting a job. So in all, they will do over 400 hours of externship prior to graduation. 
Well, that's interesting. And, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it, the different areas. I mean, you think of a dentist, but, you know, like you said, there's the oral surgery. You you know, you work in a hospital as well. Um, and there's uh, for the children, the pediatrics. And what are some other things that um, areas that they would work in? You know, if you want to become a dental assistant, what are all the choices that you got? Oh, wow. There are so many to name. They could do endodontics, which is someone who does root canals. They could do periodontics, which is gum surgeries. They could do prosthodontics, which primarily does crown bridges, dentures. Uh, we have a lot who go into doing just office management, decide they don't want to work at the chair side. They'd rather do the office management portion. Uh, we also have a lot who go on to dental hygiene and even dental school. We've had all of them come through our program. And so there's always a step up the career ladder and there's always a variety to, of, you know, different types of practices to go into. So even if you go into, you become a, a, a dental assistant and you realize maybe I don't want to get that close to the mouth, you can still go into the office area, right? So you would yes, never I mean, yeah, like I said, there's, you know, office managers. We have people going to dental sales. Um, you know, there's just so many opportunities. So, um, you know, and, and it's talking about is the job outlook. Uh, what? How is, are there a lot of jobs out there? Uh, and do you help them get jobs? How, how, what, are, what are the opportunities for them? Opportunities are enormous. Uh, most of our students, I would say probably at least 98% find jobs before they ever graduate. We cannot keep enough students in the jobs that you know we get contacted about. This summer, as the students were graduated, we had over four pages of doctors that had contacted us looking for students to hire. Um, we have, like I said, a lot who go on to dental hygiene. You know, we have the dental hygiene program at HCC as well, and we do have advanced standing with them. So we cannot, you know, unless somebody just specifically says a specific area of town, and like I said, maybe they only want an oral surgeon, then we may have a little problem finding them a job. But as long as they're open to different varieties and maybe even a short drive, we can find them a job, no problem. And how much money uh, can a dental assistant uh, be looking forward to? What What's the salary range? Most of our students start out anywhere from $16 to $20 an hour. Okay, and it goes, it can go up to what? Oh, wow, it can go up to enormous amounts. I mean, this summer when we had such a shortage, a lot of temporary agencies were paying anywhere from 30 to $50 an hour for students and anybody to come. They were looking for help so bad. Wow, and you said agents, temporary agents. Is that another route? How does that work? Well, just like you have temporary agencies for other jobs, there are specific agencies in the Houston area that are just for dental itself. So that would be someone specific they could work with as well. So uh, that would, might be a neat thing. If you don't always want to be in the same office all the time, uh, this might be an avenue? Yes, and especially if you want more um, flexibility. You know, you don't want to work every day. Um, you could do that. Uh, maybe, you know, you only want to work when your kids are off or kids are in school or something to that effect. Um, the temporary is available as well. That sounds really neat. Well, um, you know what? I, I We just really appreciate uh, all that Coleman College does and all the different uh, sciences and, and health sciences that they help us, and especially the dental assisting, because that's a very important program. So, Kay Juke, she is the program director of dental assisting for HGC Coleman College. We're really happy that you came on and told us about all these wonderful jobs. You know, when you think of dental assistant, I didn't think of all the different things you just said. There are a plethora of types of jobs one can get in that area. It's not just one. <laughs> Not just jobs and growth. There's always, you know, places to move up the ladder. There's other opportunities available. And we always hope they even go on and get their bachelor's degree and come back and teach with us. That's another avenue. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.
All right. Thanks, Kay. Enjoy your holiday. I know a lot of folks here at HCC getting ready for the holidays. Uh, we got some news and announcements for the show now. Virtual student art exhibition. That's happening across the district. Our six HCC campus art galleries are using Instagram as their gallery walls for a juried exhibition. It goes through December, uh, through the end of this month, and it's the HCC Virtual Arts Center. Registration's required, and we'll have some information in our social media posts after the show. Okay, Fast Track Training, that website's up and running and it's ready to get you the training you need to get out there and get a job, Tony. Yes, and you can get jobs in construction, healthcare, welding, smart manufacturing, IT, the cybersecurity that everybody wants. There's so many areas uh, that you can get this Fast Track Training in. So, um, Sign up for it, hccs.edu slash fast track. All right. Uh, financial aid is going to be open during our winter break. That's right. Students need help, especially signing up for classes and, and getting the right financial aid package, getting that ready for the semester. Well, we've got the offices open. Uh, if you need to reach our financial aid department over the winter break. Use the QR code on the district's Facebook page to access their holiday Zoom lobby, or you can stop by the Katy or West Loop campuses to meet with our financial aid personnel in person. Uh, we're also got a, we got a deal for you, but you got to sign up pretty quickly for this. Uh, mini semester, Tony, where you can take three hours in four weeks, three and four. There you go. <laughs> they call it the mini mister. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's it, like mini mouse. Mini. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> mini I don't mister. think technically they call that. You know where that came from? Brittany. <laughs> Brittany actually Brittany? made that up. Oh. Brittany made up the term. There is no such thing as a mini mister. She started oh. calling it that, and that's how the name came about. So well, I like it. They need to yeah. use that. I think that yeah. is great branding. But anyways, yeah, you're right. You you earn three credits in four weeks. But like you say, you need to sign up right away because the winter break is here, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's a great way to to get some credits out of the way. Okay, holiday health and well being. Um, holidays can bring excitement and also anxiety and stress. So HCC's talent engagement is reminding you of it's an employee assistance program, uh, guidance resources by ComPsych. You'll find such help uh, or such tips as physical fitness, financial wellness, and healthy holidays. Uh, visit guideresources.com and register with the company ID HCC. All right. Uh, this is the last up to the minute for the year because we're going to go on winter break too. We'll take a winter break, but we return on the air uh, January 10th, Tim. Yes, uh, we've got the two weeks that we take the winter break, yeah. December 20th uh, to the 31st, of course, uh, New Year's Eve. And then uh, when we come back, we come back actually uh, January 3rd, the school does, the college does. And then, but you, you need a week for faculty and staff to pull it all back together and yeah. get ready for the students, you know. So uh, then, we'll, as you say, we'll be back Monday, January 10th and ready to go. Yep, we will year. be, we'll be <laughs> raring to go. That's exactly right. Okay, uh, let's see. HCC's faculty and staff returns uh, around the 10th as well. We'll be back actually at work on the 3rd, right? Yes, we yeah, will. We come back on the 3rd. So we'll have the show kicking off on January 10th. Okay, spring 2022. Hard to believe. It's almost upon us. We are uh, 2021. That's in our rearview mirror. But spring 2022 registration is underway right now. Five ways you can learn. You can learn virtually completely online. We also have some hybrid courses which are online and in person. And of course, in-person classes are happening across the district on our campuses. We started them back up in October and we'll have them back in session uh, in the new year for spring 2022 semester. Keep in mind, if you are gonna take those in-person classes, you need to sign up early because the classes fill up very quickly, especially the very popular ones. Sign up early, we'll get you started. hccs.edu slash now is uh, is gonna be uh, the website where you need to and, go. And, and the thing is like, for example, I'm gonna be teaching uh, theater stage makeup do you know what's the top? You can only have six students in there right now because oh, wow. of COVID. Yeah. six, that's all. And yeah. it's already full. 
So, uh, so that's a prime example. You got to sign up early. Don't wait till after we get back from break. Sign up, get that class locked in, especially uh, these these limited classes like yours. Yeah. So uh, that's a good reason. I mean, when we say small, we mean small. <laughs> you that's know. Right. So uh, you know, especially if it's a hybrid class. Are one where you're going to go face to face. That's the ones that you really need to sign up for right away because um, they fill up most, a lot of them are filled up now, but right. sign up hgcs.edu slash now. Okay. That about wraps up the show for the year. Boy, hard to say. Uh, next year, when we get back, uh, when we start up on January 10th, we'll be uh, welcoming all of our college presidents throughout the week, uh, getting them all to visit us here on Up to the Minute. And our first guest, we already have lined up, I think, Darren Baskin, Director of Faculty DEI Initiatives. He'll be ringing in the new year with us when we return. So, uh, most of all, enjoy your break. Enjoy your time with your family. Have a wonderful holiday season. Stay safe out there. And uh, Tony, we'll see you next year. And we'll see. You will. You will. And uh, I, I won't re- wear so much red. <laughs> That's all right. That's red all right. Is my, it's perfect. my December color. <laughs> yeah, it's good to wear it today. Uh, Tony, have a great holiday season. All of you from all of us, happy holidays. We'll see you next year on Up to the Minute.